Hey everybody, today we are going to make Reuben sandwiches. That's right, Reuben sandwiches. How apropos, my husband's name is Reuben. You know, some people hate that joke, some people like it, eh, he doesn't mind it. Anyway, so we're gonna make tort uh, Reuben sandwiches and I'm gonna pair that with a tortilla soup. I made this a while back, it's been in the freezer. I have a large freezer in the garage and when something really turns out great, or a lot of my sauce, a lot of soups and things like that, I will um, freeze it. And it was so good, I thought it really paired really well with the Reuben. So we decided today, Reuben sandwiches, tortilla soup. Today, on the Chubby Hubby. Okay, so what I did was, I'm gonna start with the bread. This is rye bread, and I didn't need a whole loaf. As you know that I do, whenever bread dries out, the heel dries out, I always um, save it dry it, and then I turn it into my own breadcrumbs, which I think is a way to have a nice zero carbon footprint, kitchen food footprint. Call it whatever you want, but you know what I mean. But with rye bread, it doesn't work that way. It, you can't have rye breadcrumbs. I guess for some recipe you could. So I asked my guy at the delicatessen if he could just give me a little bit of bread, and he did. And I have just enough for this recipe. I have six pieces. And the first step, it's butter. As you can see, this butter is melted just enough. And with patience, once you get to get it started melting, I put it in the microwave. One thing I use the microwave for, melting butter, that's about all the only thing. But as you can see, it's almost mayonnaise-like mixture. It's really, really good. And what we're going to do is start by buttering one side of the bread. We're gonna be using the Breville Smart Panini Press. I think everything I own as far as Small Kitchen Electrics is Breville. I really, really like their product line. Could be any Panini Press, Shark, Quasinart, but we're using the Smart the Panini. Breville Smart Panini Press. Okay, so we have one side down, and this is why we're doing it on this sheet, is we wanna flip this over. We're going to set the other halves aside for now. And we're going to start working with our roast beef. This roast beef, I asked the butcher. I want to be able to see through it. And so he did. He made it very, very thin. This corned beef is very similar. It, it likens to almost like a roast beef. Uh, but a little bit different. So we're going to start by, no, you know what? We're gonna start by, before we put the roast beef, I wanna get a nice, that way it stays nice. This is a mayonnaise, saffron, um, it's all gonna be in the recipe. On, um, onion powder, garlic powder, a little bit of mayonnaise, saffron, um, and mustard. Uh, you can really use Thousand Island dressing. A lot of people, they just associate Thousand Island dressing to a Reuben sandwich, but I wanted to do it myself, so I made up, a, and there's also a little bit of sweet pickle relish in there. But uh, yeah, so now the same side that we buttered, the other side we're going to slather. My favorite kitchen word, slather it, slather it. We're gonna slather on. The Thousand Island dressing, as we're gonna call it, just so that no one's confused. The, the dressing mixture. Okay. And now we're gonna put on our roast beef. And you know, my house, we're grown men. You know what, I really want a nice, heavy duty sandwich. I want it to be full, right? Right. And I like the corned beef to really fill up. The, cor the corned beef is the star of this show. The corned beef is definitely the star of this show. I'll tell you a trick too. I only have so much, what do I do? Is you put on three pieces and you go evenly. And then when you find you have more left over, then you go back and start adding one piece more at a time on each one. I mean, we all know how to build a sandwich. If you don't know how to build a sandwich, that's why you're watching The Chubby Hubby. Of course, you can find out a lot more things to make by going to 
the chubby hubby cook. Uh, chubby hubby cook, chubby hubby cook, it's new, the chubby hubby cook website. And that'll take you to our YouTube channel and you will find all kinds of wonderful, wonderful things to cook. And I think that's good. What do we have, three? See, I hate to make it go to waste. You know what? I really hate to see it go to waste. So we're going to just pile on. And pile that on. And this last piece, you know, I don't know what to do with the last piece. Maybe the cook will eat it. Now we put the cheese. Sorry. <laughs> and the last step. I don't know if you saw my video or way back, but this is uh, sauerkraut. Oh my God, it smells wonderful. I made it myself. Um, and of course I used what? My weck jars, that's right. Weck jars and gaskets and clamps. I just think that there's no better way. Um, I, this, is, this jar is about six months old. So it really tells you how nice, I mean, how nice the weck jar system is. So we're going to now, I've drained some of the water off of this. with one hand. We're gonna put a nice layer of sour of sauerkraut. Do you ever wanna call sauerkraut sour cream? I do, it bothers me. It bothers me, I'm telling you. And put another one here. And then one last one. Look at how nice that is. I don't want this piece. Okay, last thing I want to put a little salt in. See how the tray worked really nice? These are barbecue trays. And usually during the summertime, I use them a lot. Running to and from the barbecue. And they dishwash, they're dishwasher safe. So they're really nice that way. Um, but um, they're also good for prep trays. Just a little salt. Again, what do I always say? Salt, a little bit of salt on your sandwich, on your dish, whatever you're making, is not going to hurt you. People take 70% of their salt by processed foods and what they eat in restaurants. So if only 30% of the food, 30% of the salt is what you make at home, it's not gonna hurt you to just put a little bit of salt if you need to. However, if you're a dietary person and salt is on that list of no-nos, no-no, okay? So we're gonna finish up We're, I forgot what side, what direction. We're gonna finish up by buttering the opposite, I do that all the time. Buttering the opposite side or the side that is going to be up. Just like that. It should hearken to you as making a grilled cheese sandwich, quite honestly, right? I think we all kind of figured that out. And then the last piece. Okay, now the panini press. This is the Breville Smart Panini Press. As you can see, the lid tips, it's a little hot. The lid tips, and on the side you can make it go small, wide, extra wide, meaning the height that the sandwich, so it don't ever crush the sandwich. But what's nice about it is when it comes down, it comes down, it comes down, and up, down onto your sandwich. Um, the, the 
by pressing a button, the plates come right off, flip upside down, and they're flat. And when it's completely flat, when it's completely flat, ouch, it's hot. Well, it's too hot to touch. But when it's completely flat, <laughs> it, it, it turns into a griddle for making pancakes or what have you. And you turn, instead of the grill mark side, you're going to turn to the flat side. This is such a simple system. When you want to make paninis, you just set it on panini and it's in the factory, it's designed to know the perfect panini. If you like it just a little bit more, just, you know, it's not quite, I wanted, you know what, I want mine burnt. Well, then you would just override the panini by turning the knobs. Each of these knobs, each of these knobs represent the upper plate or the lower plate. This thing is a lifesaver, I love it. So, all that being said, We're going to put our sandwiches. Right into the panini press. And as you can see here, it holds three wonderful sandwiches on rye bread. And then you just let it rest. Sometimes I give it just a little bit of a push, but I don't want my sandwich to mash. So I just let it rest. Now it will beep when it's ready. And as soon as it's ready, well, actually we're gonna take a look at our soup. Yeah, the soup is completely thawed. It just needs to be warmed up. So at this point, we're going to step away. We're gonna wait for these to be done. And when we come back, we'll cut into these sandwiches and you'll see how delightful they are. We'll be right back. Our sandwiches are nice and golden brown. It's kind of hard to tell on rye, but they've got just a nice, I don't know if you can hear that. They're perfect. The machine beeped and everything. I lifted it and everything looked wonderful. So we're going to take one of our sandwiches out Actually, we're going to take all three out so that when we cut them, they don't go all the wampus on us. That is a technical term for um, when food doesn't behave the way it's supposed to. Just so you know. And the grill is done. Okay. They're hot. They're very hot. I'm telling you, with my Shun Classic Japanese cutlery, this cuts like I'm cutting through butter. Truly, truly. And between my husband and I, the third sandwich is we each take half. We're not really big, big, strong eaters as we are just, we like to return to the table, you know? You know what I mean by return to the table? Of course I say that. What I'm going to do is do just what I said I wasn't going to do. Ah, hot. There it is. This will be. That is beautiful. That is beautiful. But it would be nothing if I had not tasted it with you, so I am going to cut myself a piece and burn my mouth, because as you saw, just took them off the grill. 
I'm going to taste it. They smell wonderful. I can smell the um, sauerkraut. It just, ugh, yum. Mm. Hot. The sourdough, mm. The sourdough bread, is, or not the sourdough, but the rye bread is, you can just taste it. It's wonderful. That's a complete departure if you're used to a sourdough, wheat or white. Having a rye is just um, a delicious departure. You've got the um, sauerkraut and the corned beef and the, the spreads. This sandwich is, as I like to say, this sandwich is a triumph. We're going to pair this with our tortilla soup behind and uh, we're gonna go eat. So what I would like for you to do is please go to my website, chubbyhubbycook.com. There you'll find all of my recipes and a link to my um, YouTube page where I would like for you to follow along, ring the bell. That way when I get a new video, you're gonna know it. You can also from the ch uh, ch from Chubby Hubby Cook, you can also go to my Facebook page and my Instagram page where I would ask that you like those as well. I give a lot of information there and I'm hoping that I can pass on from some information to you that way. Until then, remember, it's not just food. It's love made edible. Thank you. Bye-bye.